This is Rob Tebbett for Boxing Social in association with Pursue Fitness Sportswear. Down here today at McGuigan's Gym in London with the IBF World Super Lightweight Champion, Josh Taylor. How you doing, Josh? Yeah, good, thanks. Not bad, yourself? Not bad, thank you. Not bad. Um, nice to see you again. I've been um, inundated with messages from your adoring fan base demanding another interview. That's good. That's good. So here we are. How's things? Yeah, good. Um, just be, I've been in London back now for a while. Um, obviously since after the fight and took about four weeks off um, went on holiday, things chilled out uh, went to the Isle of Man and stuff like that with my dad and then I come back down after a few weeks started sort of ticking over again and uh, you know I've been back into training now for about four or five weeks waiting on this next date so we're kind of in limbo at the minute um, so I've been going to the pub getting a few pints and that <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, just a uh, just been just been chilling out really, just waiting on this date, ticking over, getting in shape, and uh, yeah, just waiting on the date, waiting on the go to get the go ahead. Waiting on the date, you're in limbo. Reminds me a little bit of the Baron Check fight. Yeah. Um, how is that? I mean, this is the second fight in a row now with the series that you're kind of ticking over without a date. Does the experience of the Baron Check fight kind of help when you, you consider the final of Progre? Yeah, I think it's a kind of the same same situation. Um, I think it's going to be hard for them to get out. Um, you know, he's been trying to pull out left, right, and centre, talking about um, escrow agreements, and has been paid. But he has been paid. I got paid, so he's talking nonsense. So um, yeah, it's just it's a wee bit frustrating. But you know, at the same time, it's giving me more time to get ready and get fit and then get strong, get in even better shape. You know, I'm ticking over. I'm in great shape already. So um, when I get the go ahead, you know, I can, I've I can actually afford to take the foot off the gas a little bit for the next couple of weeks. So when I get the go ahead, I can just turn it back on and you know and uh, go full steam ahead and get in great shape again so I mean I don't want to peak it too early you know so I'm, I'm kind of just ticking over at the minute and when I get the go ahead again uh, take, put the foot back on the gas and, and get ready to fight. A little bit of a different dynamic for you I think um, recently by all accounts obviously I've been spoken to you and Shane you've been doing a lot of sparring with Luke Campbell yeah. stable mate who boxes Vasil Lomachenko this weekend is it a little bit different kind of not being there for him because obviously you're working yourself and the fact that he's a, he's a southpaw as his Regis progress you know, helps you but is it a little bit of a different dynamic kind of working with Luke in a more official role as it were? Um, kind of I mean you know I'm, I'm going in there and still working and trying to do my own thing quite a lot of the time as well but I'm also working on things that I think Lomachenko will do I'm doing me things that I think he'll do and working on the angles inside pulling his gloves down and turning them and all that sort of stuff trying all that kind of stuff and just trying speed throwing a lot more punches a lot more just speed and angles um, with them been doing a lot of that stuff and stuff as well so um, but at the same time I'm kind of working on my own stuff as well I don't want to get into the habit of doing too much of the things that I think Lomachenko will do because then he might start to be able to pick his off with things and you know I'll maybe pick up habits that I don't usually do so I'm kind of just doing it bits by bits and trying trying my own thing as well but yeah it's been good you know I mean because I am trying other things out and getting some success and seeing things working because I'm also boxing a southpaw as well. Things that I'm trying are working. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's been real good. It's been real good. How has your... Sorry, I just got my wire tangled in your shoe there. <laughs> um, how has your um, mentality changed since becoming world champion? A lot of world champions talk about their kind of the additional boost some people will, will go the opposite way and it's you know once they've reached the top of the mountain it's a little bit more difficult to get yeah. up for things how's it been for you uh, just the exact same you know I've just um just the same I mean I've, I've reached my goal it's been so long um for years I've visualized it becoming world champion and being world champion and I've done it now so now it's setting new goals and setting other things you know it never stops you know it's no oh I'm world champion and my head's going to get big my ego's going to get big it's just a, it's just the same thing, you know. It's on to the next one, the next goal, which is winning this tournament, winning the Ali Trophy, becoming unified champion of the division, <clears throat> and then next one will be to become undisputed champion. So um, that's the next goal. So nothing's really changed at all. My mental side hasn't changed. I'm still down to earth, lad. You know, just chill, like to chill out, live a sort of quiet life. I'm not all about being, you know, who am I? I'm the big guy. I'm just a. Uh, there's a lot of fighters out there that are like that, you know, um, but I'm not, I'm just kind of going about my own thing, keeping my head low and, and going about my business quietly the way I always have. You know, I've always said to people about the hype stuff and things like that, you know, um, I've I've came up and uh, under the radar kind of thing, you know, if I'd been in a, another position or from elsewhere or 
and under a different banner, the, the, the hype thing would have been all around us, and I don't really like that. I'd rather do my own my own thing and let my boxing do the talking, and I have done up to now, so now we're all champ. Now I know I'm the man, and everybody else knows it as well. <laughs> you mentioned that, kind of going under the radar. I guess that's kind of a, a benefit of working with so many world-class fighters throughout yeah. your entire professional career. I mean, obviously, you debuted out in America on Carl's undercard. Yeah. You've had the likes of David Hay, George Groves, etc. come in and out of the camp. What would you say has been the biggest benefit of having guys like that around you from the start of your professional career? Just dealing with the sort of the expectation and the pressure, you know, <clears throat> I kind of done it in the amateurs, you know, I, I had the, the hopes of a nation um, hoping on me to, to win the gold medal at the Commonwealth Games before I was even selected. I was a poster boy in Scottish boxing, you know, it was me on standing on top of the cannon on top of Edinburgh Castle and things like that, you know, so it was real pressure for me to go and get the go and get the result and I actually did it so that sort of expectation and pressure I carried into the, the pros and I never really had it up until maybe the sort of Ahara fight you know there was kind of expectation there and hype there of the fight so f from being around Carl and George and, and David and all that just watching them how they deal with the expectation in the media and they just put it behind just don't make it no big deal don't take it too seriously you know so it was a I had real good learning curve at the start of my career with watching the guys how they do it and deal with the media and deal with the pressure. They just go about it themselves. So I'm in a good place now myself where I'm just I'm in that position where I don't put any pressure on myself anymore either. I'm just enjoying the ride and I, and I am enjoying it. You know, I'm, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. Who would you say has been the biggest influence out of the people that you shared camps with? Um, because I, I spent so much time with them, I'd say Carl. Um, because we were sharing a house together and things like that. So we spent a lot of time together and then sort of a, a close space at night, you know, you know, we're in the house together. So away from the gym, we spent a lot of time together as well, you know. So I had to, quite a lot of time to ask him about things and, you know, not pestering him, but, you know, kind of ask him about how he deals with things and every now and again and get wee bits of advice of him and he would give me bits of advice and um, it was real handy. So just taking his approach... Uh, not taking it too seriously and things like that. So yeah, it's been it's been good. It's been good, yeah. Any specific advice that kind of sticks out throughout that period of time? No, no, not really. No, it's just um, just just from watching him, you know, just, uh, not putting too much pressure on himself. Just going about, just going about his business quietly and confidently. You know, um, that's the kind of person I am as well. You know, I'm not kind of brash and you know to say I'm going to do this and going to do that. I'm kind of like to go about my business quietly and and have confidence in myself um, quietly confident so I took a lot of that from Carl and that gave me a lot of confidence in myself as well uh, you don't have to be loud and brash and all this to, to to prove who you are you can go about doing it quietly and uh, that's what I've done so uh, it's good back to your own fight um, with Regis Progre I told, <coughs> told you not to move and there you go just going to readjust a little Can't bit I know I know I know you tell me not to move I want to move <laughs> There we go, you're in focus now. I have to get you in focus, otherwise you look very blurred. But anyway, um, back to your fight with Regis Progre. Um, what update can you give me, if any? There's a lot of rumours flying around at the minute about October the 26th, either in London or Manchester. I see some rumours that potentially you'll share a bill with Derek Chisora versus Joseph Parker. Yeah. What can you tell me? Well, you probably know more than me. Well, actually, you probably do. I mean, I've not heard, I've not heard a thing, you know. I've, I've found out what I have found out or whatever it's been through Twitter. You know, the, um, all the, the boxing pages on Twitter chucking out the news here, there. And I haven't heard anything, you know, officially or from any of my team. You know, we've, we're hearing that it's October, um, either in London or Manchester. And then I saw a thing today on Twitter, it could be with the Chisora um, Parker fight on the same bill as well, and on pay per view and things like that. So, But I haven't heard anything, so I'm kind of in the dark, the same as you. You probably know a bit more than me, but um, I just need to wait and see, find out. I saw um, an interview with Regis Progre with Andy McCart from IFL. Shout out Andy McCart. I know he's a good friend of yours. Um, Big Andy. Big Andy. Um, I saw an interview where, that he'd done with Andy where Progre said, I think it was after the um, Hooker-Ramirez fight, where I think Progre, words to the effect of that you would stop Jose Ramirez. Did you watch, first of all, did you watch the Ramirez Hooker fight? Yeah, I watched bits of it. Um, I didn't watch the whole fight, but I watched bits of it. Uh, I can't remember where I was, actually. I was away doing something um, when it was on. But I watched it the next again day. Um, 
didn't watch it, all of it, but I watched kind of bits of it, and then I seen the finish. Um, same same pattern, the same kind of punching rhythm from Ramirez that I've always seen. So it wasn't really much difference. Um, you know, Hooker caught him a few couple of times, you know, but you know, it's just that that good shot, that one-two sort of stiff jab, mm. caught him, and he, and he jumped in and finished the fight. But I don't see anything special in Ramirez at all. Um, I really do think that I would get to him and I would I would put him out of there, yeah. Do you believe that you and me just progress the top two in the division? I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, I would say that, yeah. Got a little bit quiet between you and Regis Progre. I was quite enjoying the little back and forth you were having on Twitter. Um, can we expect to see more of that as we build up to no, October the 26th? No, he knows where I stand. I'm ready to fight. He's been trying to chicken out and and get away and get out of the fight because he's mourning about wee bits of money or here or there. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting waiting. I'm in the same boat as him. I just want to fight and prove I'm the best. Um, they're trying to get out of it, but you know I don't think they can, so he's going to have to come and fight. So he better get his ass in gear and... Uh, Stop saying is stop chasing Adrian Broner and get ready to fight me. So, yeah, I'm I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I was just about to come on to that. I know it's a name that you've spoken about in the past, Adrian Broner. Do you think that's just Progre trying to build a little bit of maybe attention or hype there? Yeah, trying to get attention, trying to build his own name, trying to build his hype, trying to get a wee bit more of a fan base. I think because I don't think he's got any fan base. I think that's probably part of the argument um, why he's bitching about coming over here because nobody goes to his fights. Um, so. Is probably trying to uh, big himself up and calling out Adrian Broner. What's he calling out Adrian Broner for? He's not got a title anymore. He's you know he's a bit he's, he's irrelevant. You know so good fighter still, good fighter still, very dangerous fighter still. But what's the point in calling him out if he thinks he's the best in the division? There's there's no point. How would you rate Progre compared to the other fighters that you faced in your career? Um, Victor Postel. Uh, Evan Baranchek, even O'Hara Davis, how would you say he fits in among those? Do you think he'll be the toughest fight of your career? It might be a little bit slicker, um, but <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. I'll tell you the day after the fight or after the fight what it was like. Um, but we'll just need to wait and see. I think it might be a little bit slicker, but um, I can't see him beating me in, 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 in any department. Certainly not at range. In close, he's not going to fight me or outman me. Um, I, 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 can't see him, I can't see him beating me at all. Just final work, so now you've got to go and do your strength and conditioning. Um, wished you away from that. Um, Luke Campbell this weekend against Vasil yeah. Lomachenko. You know him better than anybody, having obviously shared a, a camp with him, but also shared the ring with him for yeah. numerous, you know, numerous hours in sparring. How tough a task is this for Luke Campbell, and why do you feel, if you feel, he will be successful? Well, it's a huge task, and there's no doubt about it. You know, he's fighting the the best pound for pound fighter on the planet, so he's definitely got a huge task ahead of him. Um, but so has Lomachenko got a big task a, a big task ahead of him as well and Luke because Luke's got the pedigree as well he's got the amateur background he's been all over the world um, I was in the same team as him as an amateur you know so I've seen the success he's had at various different tournaments all over the world you know so Olympic gold medal and all that as well so he's got the pedigree he's got the schooling he's got the timing he's seen all the different kinds of styles that you've that you've seen you know in, in the amateur game um, he's been over in America for a number of years training, you know, seen all the different kinds of styles over there as well. You know, so he, he's well skilled and he's got a, a bund abundance of experience. So um he's Loma's got his hands full as well. So I think Luke will be very good at cancelling out his turning and you know and keeping his discus control. You know, he's very good at that and and catching you as you come in with his long whippy shots. So I think he'll I think he'll get great success doing that. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. How hard does Luke punch? Everybody I've spoken to who shared, with him, uh, shared a ring with him in sparring yeah. talks about how hard he punches and it's kind of deceptive power. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, it is. It's, um, it's not sort of like knockout power, you know, like concussive power, but, you know, it's, it's whippy and it's, and it's sharp and it's quick. And when he keeps his speed up, like when he doesn't load up, he punches harder than when he does when he loads up. I think so anyway, because there's more speed in it, you know, and, and there's more variation in it as well, and there's more snap in it. So, yeah, he definitely punches a bit harder um, when he's keeping it fast in the timing. Um, but in all round, since the last time I sparred with him a couple of, well, a few years back, he is definitely punching a little bit harder. So, yeah, he's definitely got his man strength now, as I say, and uh, yeah, he's punching hard. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. 
Okay, well, just before I go, as I mentioned at the start of the interview, I did receive an awful lot of messages or comments on YouTube yeah. asking for this interview. Uh, it must be a nice feeling. I mean, yeah, you know, world so. champion. Yeah, people asking for interviews and stuff. No, I don't know why, because it's been pretty boring, isn't it? <laughs> 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 no, just uh, it's nice to know that people are asking for me, and you know, and I'm on people's minds. So thanks for the the recommendations and you know, and asking about me and asking to see how I'm doing. So thank you and. Uh, I'll make sure I train my hardest for you all and uh, and still, you know, so aye, thanks. Thanks for the support. Cheers. Message for the fans. Going to play devil's advocate. Do you have any messages for Regis Progray? Keep it clean? None at all. Just sign the contract and let's get on. That's it. OK, well, Josh Taylor, the Tartan Tornado, always a pleasure speaking to you. Thanks very much, as always, for speaking to Boxing Social. Nice Look one. forward to catching up with you nice soon. One. Nice one. Are we fist bump? Oh, fist bump. Fist bump. <laughs>